Hello and welcome back to just another football podcast. This week, oh, this week, it's 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 a it's a sore one. This one, after the highs of of last week's performance with Chelsea, it, it's it's a lot tougher. And and I'm and I'm joined with Chelsea fan George, and hello, hello. as you can see, Leeds fan Fergus, otherwise known as FJC. And yeah, good good to be here. <laughs> Cheers. I can imagine. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> it's um, yeah. Like we're we're gonna be covering this week. We're gonna be covering um Leeds and Chelsea, and um we'll do Newcastle um and Man City uh as the main games. So maybe touch on some of the other games, but um as uh, in the chat earlier in our group chat earlier, Harry described uh this podcast coming up as a post mortem of Chelsea. Um, I don't know if we're quite there yet. I think I think they might be doing CPR on us, or um, or or, or uh, trying trying to resuscitate us. But it was it, it's it's just annoying that it's a it's a replicating factor. This it, a three 0 defeat to to Leeds, and it's it's just the same things cropping up time and time again for us. What yeah, what, what what did you? Well, you know what? We'll, we'll focus on the positives first. Considering the last time, Fergus, you were on, you know, it was you were worried about relegation. Maybe you weren't. I'd imagine you would have been quite positive about the whole situation. But well, I, relegation I think it was being threatened. early enough in the season that it wasn't <laughs> as risky at that time. But yeah, so it was a brilliant performance by Leeds, wasn't it? Where, where do you think? Where do you think he's got it right? Um. Well, I think every just every player was at it. I don't think it was. Mm-hmm. I don't think we actually had to be that that good today. But every player was at it. Adams was pretty much winning every challenge that he went in for. The press was really aggressive, and that's how we got the first goal. So yeah, but it was it was just everyone was competing. No one was really no weak links, and I wouldn't say that we were particularly effective but it was one of those games where if you do your jobs right because Chelsea weren't at it you take your chances and you score them and it's pretty plain sailing it was it, that, that was the most worrying thing it was um, I did feel it was plain sailing like, I felt like Chelsea could have been out there for another three hours and we and we weren't going to come close to store, scoring um, um, you mentioned the first goal there Um I, it, it was it was another mistake from Mendy. The, the I, I I called it from the beginning, yeah. Fergus, didn't I? On, on my streams, I've yeah. called it from the beginning. We needed to watch that compilation. Watch that compilation, guys. It it said ev- everything you need to know. No, I mean, like he, he, he obviously Mendy is is a great keeper, a great shot stopper, but um and usually he's better with his feet. In fact, earlier in the half, he actually done like a. Cruyff turned someone I'm pretty sure or, or got got away from a, an on Russian striker very coolly um, and then just didn't clear his lines and he was told to clear his lines by the defence I've seen some people saying that um, the two wide centre backs should have dropped either side to, to offer a pass but Reese James pointed to go long pointed to just get rid um, yeah. uh, and it, he didn't and it was it's another mistake the, I, there's people on Twitter tonight, George, saying Mendy should be dropped for the next game. Would you go that far? I, I think that's a little bit harsh, mainly. Not well, it's not harsh. I think I mean it's probably a, a fair shout if you had a backup keeper that you could trust. Um, if there were two competing goalkeepers, then then yeah, yeah I would say so. But well, with goalkeepers, if you drop a goalkeeper, that's I think, in my opinion, really significant. Um, you uh, so I, I think we, we should continue with him. I don't think he's a long term solution simply because I don't think he is a modern keeper. And like a keeper, like you've said, is, is passing out from the back isn't ideal. Um, it's a bit of a shame that that arguably two of the two, you know, two of the goals came from individual errors with, with you know, Sterling giving away a really silly foul and, and, and Mendy. Obviously, the press was really effective um and got you got um leads lead leads the goal you do have to wonder 
you know, could it have been nil nil at half time? You know, would would that have been a completely different story in terms of Chelsea just controlling mm-hmm. it? Um, Obviously, the press uh, again. Leeds' press was was really uh, was effective, especially on Conor Gallagher. Uh, yeah, thought. he didn't have a great game. Um, I strayed a little bit from the question, but so I'll go back and I'll go. No, they, we we can't drop him, but it's a real worry, and it's a, it's a it's a place where we need to strengthen for sure in the future. I I, I think I think we, well, we we signed a young goalkeeper. He's eighteen. Was it Selena? Is that what you call him? Mm, um, yeah. Uh, from Chicago Fire, I think I'm right. Um, I I have no idea about this guy, but um, it, it it's encouraging that we we ha- are do have the foresight to to be signing a, a young goalkeeper now. Um, yeah. my choice would have been Mizuno, but um, I'll settle for um for Selena, uh, for now. But yeah, no, I I think I always think you have to back your goalkeepers in this situation. Too. That they're on their own out there. A lot of the time, um, and I'd be more inclined to 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 back a goalkeeper, especially if they've been been as good as Mendy previously has. Um, but yeah, it it was we met, you touched on on Gallagher. It, it's funny they at half time there was I, it's pretty sure Stat and, and David. I think it was his first half numbers. Maybe maybe it's even his full ninety I think it minute was his full, numbers. Full ninety minutes. Yeah, and it's hundred percent this, hundred percent that. Loads of tackles, loads of duels. I thought he was shocking for the and first. The, but then it's seventy three percent passing accuracy. Yeah. Yeah. And there yeah. you go. Uh, he certainly I, didn't put how many di- how many times he was dispossessed as well. I'm I, sure. I I'm I'm sure his duels are quite good because in the first twenty minutes he probably didn't get near a duel to compete in it. Otherwise. It, you probably would have lost it out in it. Um, Gallagher, I, I still like. I, I still think he'll. He's a different type of player to Kante, but I still think he'll. He'll. Um, that that's the role he's going to fit into. Is is out of the two, uh, in the pivot, he's going to be the one pushing on. Um, and, Obviously, yeah. sort of Fergus Fergus was at the game. Was it was it noticeable? You know that 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 he was targeted with the press because you know watching from from Sky Sports. Not to plug them, but uh, you know it was very obvious that he had two or three bodies around him. I don't know if that's just the nature of Leeds' press. Anyway, it's just natural, or whether he was sort of targeted, at, like you know individually. What what did you feel about that? Um, I wasn't really paying attention to it, but yeah, I think it was just uh, I was he, he was left centre mid, wasn't he? So yeah, yeah, I think it was part because he might be targeted because Adams has started quite a lot on left. Our left centre mid usually, and he was on the right hand side this time, so it might be that Marsh has seen Gallagher there and thought we'll switch Adams over because he's a really good presser. Yeah, I thought yeah. Koulibaly was targeted as well, um, which makes sense in terms of that left hand side and, and moving and, Adams over. And Ali's point that he's made previously about Koulibaly struggling with dribblers and getting turned. I mean, that first yellow card, Aronson turned him inside out, uh, and it was away, um, and. I mean, there's actually there was two yellow card challenges in that one challenge. He like if 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 he if he if he got a ref on a bad day, he could have seen red straight yeah. away. <laughs> um, but and in fairness, as lucky Aronson didn't like make too much of the the arm round the throat or face like. But it was I think thought yellow was right. I don't think anybody was asking for red really. But um, he he, he really. It, it it never felt like he got going. The one thing I'd say though, just on Chelsea, is that I did feel like before the goal we were the better team, and um, it was a very scrappy game. And when I say the better team, not yeah. clearly. I thought we were ever so slightly, and we were sl- slowly starting to to get our rhythm. And I did feel like the goals kind of lifted, and I I'd imagine it lifted Ellen Road anyway. Um, but like it, it was, I imagine for the players, it was like seeing Mandy make that mistake. It's like it, it, it's it, maybe they probably don't need it, but it's like the validation of of pressing as much as they do was like there's your reward. Like you've got you, and that would just make you hungry for more. And also like give you the confidence that Chelsea aren't at it today, and we're gonna go at them even more after that, and try and do the same again. And and I felt like, uh, and then it def- and done the opposite to Chelsea. It like deflated Chelsea. Um, 
because I, I, di- I didn't think the momentum was going away from us before that goal and before Mendy's mistake. And it all seemed to just fall apart from there for Chelsea. So, yeah, it definitely felt like it was an even game up until that point. Because yeah. yeah. that Sterling chance right at the start, I was just walking yeah. into a ground as it happened and it just... I was thinking, here we go. This is going to be a tough game. Yeah. Yeah, exa- but, exactly. Um, but yeah. He definitely had a few chances where if he'd have taken them, it would have been probably a completely different game. Cause Cucurella had are. a good chance and he, he, he skewed it wide. But but again... I you know, had that one, didn't he, where Melier had to make a save. Yeah. Yeah, um, but it, it, again, it's 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 for Chelsea. It's it's we're just not potent enough in attack, and people point to the defensive mistakes, the individual mistakes, um, and that is an issue because I'm pretty sure we're one of the highest in the Premier League for individual errors leading to goals or in, individual errors leading to shots now, but um, over, over the past season or so, but. I I feel like th- those will be ironed out, um. Uh, but it's go- going forward. What we can never sustain pressure. We never do like a a, a Man City or Liverpool, uh, stranglehold on a team, pin them back. Like there's Man City today. I think that's a bit bit unfair on you, to be fair, because last week, you did pretty much have a stranglehold on Spurs. We we oh. we do we do in, in some sense, but there's you, there's you, not you really a threat. Teams, but you don't time. really you don't really have a penetration. Yeah, that's probably a better way of saying it. Like there's not there's not a sustained penetration of a team. We might, might keep the ball in their in their half for a bit, uh, in that way, but it's not like it, like we I can't think of any really solid chances we had today. Uh, after the the goals went in for Leeds, um, but yeah, the, like, like, what, where do you think the issue is with this attack, George? For for, for me, it it's got to start with Tuchel, uh, and I'm sort of I I think I've got a wry smile. I suppose you know it's bittersweet in the sense that obviously we've lost three 0 to Leeds, um, a fairly historic ri- rivalry, um, and it shouldn't take that uh, for us to start questioning Tuchel because re- in reality it's been like this and and you know Fergal and I have mentioned it t- you know countless times on, on the podcast that we, he really struggles with with coaching attack in fact you know he's well known for not coaching an, an attack in terms of patterns of play um, he, he sort of gives a, a an element of freedom but Getting balls into into Havertz and Sterling, especially in behind defenses, um, it, it's pretty it's pretty difficult. And you can even you can do that in in low blocks. We saw with we'll, we'll go to the City game, but um, City getting passes in in behind defenses that are extremely low blocks um, really effectively. Chelsea don't do that. We don't play any of our, any of our passes into the box. It's it typically crosses. Um, and, and we we're not going to the byline enough. Perhaps we don't have the personnel, but I, I don't really back that, or I don't sort of um, prescribe to that belief simply because of you know Romelu Lukaku last year. Um, you know, we I, I truly believe that no matter what striker we have up front, I think we'll struggle to get chances for them. Um, so uh, it's got to start with the manager, and I'm sure he probably knows that as well. I mean, it, it's really scary that our three goal scorers this year, I believe, um, our only three goal scorers this, this year have been uh, Jorginho, Rhys James, and Koulibaly. Yeah, I think that's, that's right. That's telling, right? I I, th- I thought it was Thank a you. bad mistake from Tuchel today to start Rhys James at, at right centre back. Um, I if um. No, um, I was glad to see Gallagher in the lineup because I was looking forward to him playing, but perhaps the right pairing would have been to put Lofts to cheek in midfield, who I thought had a solid enough game again. I don't think he was the worst, but no, there, there wasn't many in that sort of midfield line that really had the courage to try and break Leeds' press um, uh, and do it convincingly. But I thought maybe Lofts cheek did, did it a little bit better than the other ones. I thought I thought I thought if he if he goes into centre mid alongside uh Jorginho, 
and then Reese James at, at wing back. I, I just think that that's better. And then Trevor Chalaba, I'm quite happy for him to come at right centre back. And the fact that he's now getting talked yeah. about moving out on loan, I just find that bizarre. Especially because we, I don't, I feel like we we still need numbers in that defence. Um, so it's it's strange to be trying to get rid of him. Um, the, yeah, the, it's too too cool. He he needs to. He really needs to get start getting this to work for him now. Um, especially now the, way... the money that could be that could be spent on him. Go ahead, Fergus. One of the weird things with uh, like Chelsea's style is that the recruitment's all been not not individualistic players, like in the front front attacking line. Mm-hmm. If yeah. you've not got a manager who's not going to coach those patterns of play, you're pretty much just setting up to fail. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it, it's an odd one. Yeah, I mean, I mean, bringing in Sterling, obviously, he he is quite individ, uh, an individual, I suppose, in. in um, maybe early Man City days, and especially at, at Liverpool, you know, he does like to dribble past people. He does like to take people on and and, and take charge. But he's not really, he's not really what you would call a a talisman, is he? He's not, he's not no. like you said that that sort of selfish player, that that individual who who yeah. is going to really drag a team up. I, I, I don't like you said. I, I, I don't really see that. And when you've got sort of teams and I, I, I said this in, in sort of preseason, but when you've got teams even as low down as sort of I, I suppose your Fulham's, um obviously Rodrigo scoring some goals as well. With strikers that already have two free goals, you know, Che Adams, I know he scored them both in, 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 in one game, but Zaha, you've got you've got players that, that you you've got focal points. Chelsea don't have a focal point. Um at all, and and perhaps Sterling was supposed to be that. He's not really the profile that I, I would bring in to fit that role. No. Obviously, maybe the it'd be interesting to 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 sort of compare with Rodrigo, who's who's got four goals for Leeds already. Um, he's not exactly. Chelsea I'm looking quality, in for my FPL. But he, he, he looks yeah, like scoring. hot property. And so, so is it? Is it? At that point, would you go? Well, Rodrigo clearly isn't as good of a player as Sterling on paper. Surely, it's it it, it it's a system uh, issue. Would would you say that, Berg? Or uh, I suppose from 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 what you've seen, because I I know you perhaps weren't his biggest yeah. fan last year. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I I'm. I I I I, I just. I don't know. I, I I think we need we need to just be. It's like a lack of ideas. Like there is no patterns of play. Is, is the issue? Um. Um. Who? who which player was? It? Sorry, that you were talking about. Yes. Yeah, so, so Rodrigo. Rodrigo Rod- Feliz. Oh. So so obviously Fergus can probably give us. Oh more, yeah. yeah. More on him. But but he was pretty poor last year. I think mean, it's probably fair to say. Or well, not poor, but he certainly wasn't a goal scorer. Um. Like like he's t- somehow turned into. But. I, I'd say that that's the system that that sort of, and maybe captaincy as well has given him a bit, a bit of um, uh, a boost. But in terms of pressing, he's perfect for that. I would I would definitely wouldn't say he's perfect for a pressing side, but no, no, that that is a one one thing that stops him from being at that top level. At that top level, okay. But is this season? It's just been that he's probably been he's been put in up front positions more often. Because last season he was pretty much playing a ten all season, yeah, and sometimes even being pushed back to a number eight. But yeah, is I think it's the it, the system that Marsh plays is more just one of the four players will get on the end of chances, mm-hmm. and recently it's just been Rodrigo. But Could I wouldn't say that he's he's taken up his game another level because today he, he wasn't even that involved. He just got on the end of two chances. Yeah. And um, on that, so like we'll, we'll, we'll touch on on Leeds and what what have you thought of the window for 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 Leeds, the transfer window? Or have you been impressed with all the new signings? I mean, Adam Adams and uh, and Aaron's Aronson look look brilliant. Aronson was causing all sorts of trouble today. The business the business that we've done is really good, but I'm still not going to be happy with the window unless we get another striker in or something like that because. And even a left back, I'd want a left back, but that doesn't look like it's going to happen. Really? Cause, yeah. Because yeah, I'd say left back be one of the weakest spots. 
although um Strokes has been well playing there. well there, but he's he's not a left back and I'd like to see him at centre back. Fair, fair. Um who who, who do you think's gonna be the the standout for of, of those players you have signed this so far? Probably Adams or Aronson. Maybe well, Adams, Aronson and Rocker are the three ones that are looking to really hit the ground running, but Yeah. Christensen's looked a bit shaky, but the, those first three They've, every game they've looked good. Aronson looks perfect for a style. Adams wins the ball back, which is pretty much everything you need in that position. Gets about the pitch. And Rock has just got that pass to get the ball forward. So they've, they've made a really good spine in that, that midfield. But it's looking really good there. And then Sinister, we haven't even seen much of him. So Yeah. And, and he's... Yeah, he was. He's kind of the Rafinha replacement, really. But I can't imagine he, the the replacement, the aggregate. Um, he's he's dubbed the Rafinha replacement, but I think Aronson's probably more of that replacement for the first team. Yeah, mm. not, not not replacing him in same same style, but playmaker. He's he's the, everything's going through him as opposed to it was Rafinha. Like, um, yeah, um, I'm trying to think. Was is, is there any other points you wanted to make about Chelsea, George? No, I, I think I think it's probably the same same old story. Um, I, yeah. I, I think I think we need to to be really careful about over exaggerating this defeat. I mean, obviously it's it's terrible and it's a bit of a shock. I feel I Tuchel feel was playing it down with the media. In, in still, in still in shock. Yeah, but I don't think it's a catastrophe, especially considering other results um, that have gone on. The only the only problem is Arsenal. You know, look extremely good, and and you know at the moment. I'd probably tip for that for that top four, uh, that third place in the top four, you know, very comfortably. But yeah. We're not out of it, and 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 I can see us. I think it's going to be a really boring season for Chelsea, winning, you know, maybe games one nil by one goal. Um, uh, I, I I I think this is more of a freak result than it is a sign of you know of how Chelsea will continue to play. Um, but there's definitely some 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 worrying signs, especially the. I, I think there's certain players that, that aren't ready to make that step up to Chelsea. And I think Conor Gallagher is that. I think um, Callum hudson Doy has been that for a while. And I think Ruben Loftus-Cheek might be that as well. And I'm not... I, I know that's quite controversial in terms of sort of this, this great Chelsea academy, but I do worry about... Um, you know, you, you do look at sort of Man City. You do look at Arsenal. They're looking now to, to really get their first team kind of without those players, you know, sort of maybe pushing aside Smith Rowe a little bit. Um, you know, Saka's obviously in there. Keeping a few in is, is absolutely perfect, but buying in players that are genuinely good enough for top four and then having the other players as more bit part would be, I think, more more effective. Yeah, unless you get ridiculously lucky, you're never going to have a team full of youngsters either, or academy products. Yeah. My, my only caveat to that is Gallagher... Is a is at the moment he's just a squad player and he's filling in for injuries. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. We're not relying yeah, on but... him every week, and I think I hate I hate seeing, um, I hate seeing a Danny Drinkwater being signed to try and fill a hole and try and get a squad player, um, that isn't gonna. Uh, it's it's but... it's it's like that and Zappa Costa, both yeah, of those I signings agree. were yeah. were, um were signings that were were there they weren't weren't there to push for first team they were like sort of opportunistic he's a solid player we'll bring him in to do a solid job we're not going to pay it over the odds whereas i think the chelsea academy lads can do that um and do that to a higher quality and with, with more about them the 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 i i i i'll i I'll still back conor gallagher to to turn it around it's literally just he's, one game. He's not a player for that system, though, is he? So, well, I think the system needs to change anyway. So, but if, if you're not going to change the system, you can't really have Gallagher playing as a six, and he doesn't. There's yeah. nowhere else for him in the team. Yeah, I I, I get your point, but I th- I think I think you, I didn't think you'd see it as much, but I think Tuchel is trying to shift to a four, anyways, even if it's just with possession of the ball. Um, 
I, 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 I think we'll we'll see more. I think we'll see more of that. The, I, I, I still, I also still think I, I'm, I, I still think a Hudson Odoi, if he had gone to Bayern, would be in their first team, being really, really good. Maybe that's Bundesliga, but um, and being part of Bayern Munich. But I, I, I still think that it's a waste of talent there. Maybe he's now not good enough for Chelsea. But from what I've heard, he's he had a, a really good preseason. Like he t- he's done everything he can to come back from from whatever knocks he had. Yeah. He bulked up, and then Tuchel hasn't really given him a chance. Ziyech was coming on off the bench there. That frustrated me. Yeah, I mean I've but, never liked Ziyech, but like that, Ziyech that can like be one midfield on the pitch as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. That was the other thing. I don't know that I we changed formation about I think four or five times during the game, and not one of them seemed to make a difference. And then at the end, I kind of get it because he was just going. We need attackers. We need goals. Get get on the pitch there. But um, it was I, too early as well to do yeah. it. I mean, he did it. He did it extremely early. And I, I know we've sort of um, it may have been three three down at that point, but I think it, it was probably two. But. Uh, yeah, uh, Jorginho coming off and not having a, a holding midfielder at all is is suicide in my opinion. So mm. I, f- um, I feel like we missed Kante massively. I think Kante would have would have put it up to that Leeds midfield, but or, Le- or Le- yeah. yeah, but Leeds Leeds were Leeds were just incredible as you said. Everybody was on it first, as you said. Yeah, then. and um, because we got the lead pretty early on, we pretty much rode the wave of the atmosphere as well. But yeah. yeah. Um, and um and they they just finally on Chelsea, we're getting linked to Aubameyang. I I, I uh, and it looks like that deal, it's slowly but surely edging towards a conclusion of him signing for us. Are you happy with that? How do you feel about that? I actually quite like Aubameyang. Um, I'm not happy with the profile, as in, if you take away Aubameyang and his, you know, uh, obviously. Signing a, 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 I think he's thirty three. Signing an old striker for twenty million, um, I believe it's going to be. I, I exactly think Barca looking. have pure it, it, cheek it, it, signing a Bamian smells... on a free. Yeah, uh, and then uh, after, like, after getting the contract written off by Arsenal, and then are yeah. turning around and going twenty million, please. Yeah, I, I, I think it is. It's very cheeky, especially when the I... can't register Kunde. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I I do think he is a really good player though, and he works well with Tuchel. And Tuchel's already come out and said that he knows about his discipline issues. But at Dortmund, it was sort of more the case that it you kind of allow it if he's going to score 60, 60 goals out of ninety games or whatever it may be. Um, and he's playing up front. He's clearly going to play up front for Chelsea. He's not going to be sort of shoved on the on the left wing, which I don't believe to be his best position. But again, it's it's not it it, it smells panic buy. It it stinks of a panic buy. Um, so in in that case, it's 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 a little bit worrying. But he, he's a proven goal scorer and he works well with Tuchel. So I think it could be successful, just not for long term. Yeah. Fergus is an outsider. What do you think of it? Well, the profile for, of him doesn't really suit. To, on the outside, doesn't look like a profile that you want if you want to build a team that can yeah. just consistently sustain attacks and things like that. So part of me is thinking, is, is it just Tuchel's wanting to get someone in to win a cup? Because mm-hmm. you're not going to be able to control games with a, a front three of Aubameyang and Sterling and whoever else because no one's going to hold up a ball. Yeah, I, it it's going to be interesting the where the the mountain Havertz conundrum, um, as to do both of them start or will one be dropped, um, perhaps your outside shout of mount at right wing yeah, back we, and James at right uh, right like centre it. back, I like it, um, yeah maybe mounting the uh, Ruben Loftus cheek will yeah perhaps um. I knew what after seeing Last of Seek played, I'm 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 not as opposed to it as I once was. Um yeah. Um I, yeah, I, th- I think that sums up sums it up really with, with Chelsea at the moment, like the Aubameyang sign. It's it it, it is Scaragon. Um yeah. I saw 
uh, report saying that to, uh, that Todd Bowley um, was surprised at the lack of uh, yes. data collection and um, data usage. Um, I'm guessing in the recruitment department. Um, and it does feel like we're just going for big names, but I I I full faith that once we get uh, a director of football in, we apparently threw everything at Michael Edwards to try and get him in, and he's he's he says it didn't doesn't suit him now. I think because he wants a break from from all of all of the football, but um he was he was interested, so I think we're we're on to someone else. But I think once we get in a top, and it's good to see we're going for Michael Edwards, the the, the best, the best. Um, so if if we get someone like that in, um. It, then I think the transfers become more sensible, but for the moment uh, it's going to be splashing <laughs> close to five hundred million by the end of it if if we sign everybody we're linked to. Um, but yeah, um, moving on, uh, or uh, we'll, we'll 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 cut the wee break and when we come back we'll we'll talk Newcastle and Man City. Newcastle 3, Man City 3, a thrilling game, um, it seemed to be a lot going on, I unfortunately I didn't really see this game, um, I, I've watched the highlights back, I, I was I, at this point I was drowning my sorrows with my dad, uh, um, <laughs> taunting me at the, <laughs> at the Chelsea resort earlier, my dad's a Leeds fan of anybody who doesn't know, so that was, that was fun, um, but yeah, moving on, uh, as as I'll try to do. Um, yeah, this game, it looked fantastic. George, you watched it though, so t- tell us all about it. What did you make of it? Yeah, it was it was a brilliant game. I, I think with the early um, Gundogan, uh, Gundogan goal, it was a real worry, I think, for, for Newcastle fans. It will have been that it could turn into a route. You know, City have been very good recently, mainly with Aguero. Um, against against Newcastle, they tend to give them a good battering. Um, there's been a few cases where where the, the Newcastle have, have fought back, but um, yeah, uh, you sort of noticeable sort of five nil defeats in in sort of the last five years. But Newcastle were absolutely fantastic, and I I think um, Newcastle and and I'm, I'm thinking back to Leeds, I think it might have been two seasons ago now, have given a really good because uh, there's there's not many teams that have beaten. Um, City or gotten points against City, so uh, a really good template for for um, you know mid table sides, l- l- lower um, uh, half sides to to get points at, um, from City, and that's that's counter attack and and a really really aggressive counter attack. Um, you do have to alongside that, you do have to um, ensure that you're you've got a, an aggressive back four. So what I noticed. In terms of the game, and obviously we'll probably get on to Saint Maximan and, and and you know the more forward players, but um, Botman was really crucial in in sort of the way he dealt with Haaland, and Haaland had a fantastic game, so it's very difficult to to stop someone like that anyway. But every ball that went into him, um, Botman came out really quickly, really aggressively. Um, you know he. he he gave away quite quite a few fouls against him, but but he stopped him spinning. He stopped him getting the ball um, just outside the area. I thought that was really crucial for for Newcastle. And he, he, in terms of turnover, pretty pretty key um, in 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 that. It's just like Leeds in terms of taking your chances. I mean, Newcastle got quite a few, if we're honest, and probably could have scored more. Um, but it, it's absolutely vital that you do against these top teams, and and they did. City are just so good that they can score two pretty pretty easily against both sides. Yeah, the, I mean the the Trippier free kick was fantastic, unbelievable. Um, yeah, I, I saw some people saying that he should have been sent off as well. Um, but I, I, I so, thought no. it was no. I thought it was just it was definitely a, a yeah it was cynical challenge, not that dangerous, just tripping someone off basically. But um, but yeah, it's it's annoying to see Man City go three one down. And they, you, you always back them to come to, to get yeah, back. That's just a level of that now, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, probably um, have to be fraudulent, and you're still probably thinking, 
Oh. Well, they've still got a chance. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they're they're, they're insane, and it, De Bruyne was absolutely fantastic um, in terms of his passes, and uh, perhaps you know we talked about Chelsea uh, and other teams that I think do struggle breaking lines down. You know, noticeably sort of Liverpool. I think we every team wants a De Bruyne and probably lacks a De Bruyne in that sense. Um, he gets balls into the box very effectively, and that's where you score most of your goals. You're not going to score most of your goals through long shots, and uh, um, and obviously crosses are fairly effective, but not typically for the for the bigger sides. I know uh, Gundogan uh, got a bit lucky with, with his. But there was there was one moment, and it was the the, the Bernardo Silva goal. It, obviously, you've seen the highlights. Yeah, uh, he put it on a plate for him. It cuts right he, through. And and again, I've sort of mentioned how how sort of Botman uh, s- stepping out was really effective at, at this um, stage. It actually kind of created a little bit more space for for Silva. But that's the that's sort of the genius of of De Bruyne that he sees that pass um, and he can get a ball into a box of a low block team and the player seems to have acres of space and time to, to make a finish is, is pretty incredible. Yeah, yeah, when you've got De Bruyne able to play that pass and then you've got to worry about Haaland making all these runs that he's oh, making. Absolutely, it's yeah. Impossible for any defender. Would um, <laughs> where, where, where do you see Newcastle finishing, Fergus? Um, do, you think, uh, do you think they'll finish above Leeds? Um, probably, yeah. But um, I, I had them at the start of the season to be about ninth or tenth, I think. But that was because I had Palace at eighth and West Ham at seventh, and I don't think West Ham are going to get seventh at the moment. <laughs> where I've started the season. And where think... where did you have United? Did you have United in sixth? Yeah, but I, with Casemiro coming in, they should probably just bounce back. But yeah, we we forget that Arsenal Arsenal lost their first three games, you know, last season. So it's certainly, although it matters, um, and it'll be a big blow for United later on the season, they they really should bounce back just with the quality of players they've got, um, or they've got sort of bringing in, especially with Casemiro. But but yeah, Newcastle's a weird one because you know they've really got a massive opportunity now to to push for Europa and even. I mean, if Chelsea if Chelsea can play like they are, you know, like they did, sorry, against against Leeds, and I I I don't think, I, truthfully, I don't think Spurs have been all too convincing in their last no. two games. There's an opportunity I, I, for for a rogue top four push, in in my opinion. The 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 other thing as well about about Spurs is like they're saying like, oh, you know, it's great to see Spurs get over the line, even though they're not playing well, sign of a good team. I always think that is bollocks at the start of the season. You're, as a Chelsea fan, like we're well used to seeing that sort of uh, result in Premier League winning seasons, you don't <coughs> want to see that too early because it runs out. Your luck will run out. Um, and as you said, George Spurs, they they should we should have won the game last week. I thought we were brilliant, and then to we've. We, complete opposite performance this week but um spurs were 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 there for the taking and only for a poor ref it would have been a a pretty comfortable result for for chelsea in my opinion so i i i just don't get um i I, I'm, i'm surprised just that they're not as good as i thought they would have been coming into the season uh considering like a lot of their signings were 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 really good signs and done relatively early as well, um, to for for preseason and everything like that, um, I I'm not convinced them. And I think out of all of the Arsenal are the best at the moment for the for that top four race. Um, I mean, is 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 there an opportunity for a, for a team like Newcastle, Brighton, maybe not West Ham anymore, Brighton, Leeds? I mean, Leeds are third. Is is there an opportunity to get top four or top, you know, top five? Uh, I, I guess it's probably fairer to say. Um, you know, is that something you, you would obviously not? You're not aiming for Fergus, especially considering Fergus you know, is more optimistic you know, than you think. He, he's aiming title. for the title yeah. until yeah, it's mathematically impossible. Yeah. Um, but but obviously, I predicted them. Fair, you know, leads to be fairly low down as I, I as I often do. Um, your signings have been really impressive. 
Newcastle signing signings I think have been really impressive, considering that they they're in a weird position where they know they're going to have to overpay a lot of the time, and they know that if they um, if they're not smart and uh, it could be it could be really costly. Um, I think, and uh, there isn't that infinite money with with rumours of sort of harsher financial fair play um, on certain things as well. Yeah. Um, it, it'll be interesting moving forward, but I, I think both teams have recruited really well. I think, but I think teams outside Newcastle's of... best business came in January, didn't it? But yeah, yeah. well, well, yeah, with, with especially with Trippier. Um, but then you could argue, so Chris Wood wasn't great, but but Botman's a fantastic signing. Um, uh, and uh, I, obviously Bruno has been pretty exceptional uh, as well. If teams, it's it's nice to see teams that that run effic- pretty efficiently, pretty effectively. Sort of Brighton, one of them, especially with, with the players they've sold, do well. I I think anyway. Yeah. Um, uh, and, uh, and teams like Chelsea and and United aren't aren't doing so. Yeah, no, it, it's probably it's probably better for football, really. Um, the, the you know we're seeing more efficient models actually be more effective. And well, it, it's a bit of knowing, knowing that you have to make these deals right. Absolutely, yeah. Compared yeah. to Chelsea or Man United, we can just say, well, yeah. if we get this one, we've got we've got this much money anyway. We can buy another guy. We can put him out on loan, and it won't make a difference if, if we don't like him. Yeah. Um, but 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 then I do think that Newcastle have been avoiding that mentality, and uh, I think bigger clubs will yeah. have to move that way. I really do think bigger clubs. Well, if Liverpool and City are already there, they just yeah yeah, but yeah. But, and that's why they're, they're at that extra level. But what what I'd say is really smart about Newcastle is they, they know they've got the financial fair play to, to deal with, but they're not able to attract a player that is worth absolutely throwing all the money in the world at yet. They're not able to attract that player. No. So the what they do, the fact that they're just being more sensible and getting sign, good signings that will grow with the team. Um, at, for the moment, and not overspending really on anybody. I think all their signs, apart from Chris Wood, but Chris Wood also came with the, the factor of helping to send down Burnley. Yeah. Um. So you know, like the he's he's not being as bad as he's been made out to be either. No. No. Um. And, but I I I don't think they've they've overspent anybody really and. Yeah, it's it's really smart business. I, again, they've got the Brighton director of football in, didn't they? Um, so yeah, they're, annoyingly they're gonna, annoyingly they're gonna be in the top four race sooner rather than later. The way the way they're being run, if they continue to have these successful transfer windows. Um, interesting, interesting sort of fact. Sorry about the, the New, New, Newcastle City game. That I've just noticed that City actually only used one sub. Um, out of the five that, that they were allowed to, especially sort of the quality of depth they've got. It's, it, it's interesting that, that and you mentioned sort of that efficiency um, moving forward. Pep, Pep's, I believe, is a more set starting eleven than he's ever had um, in terms of rotation. He, he, he's dropping that a little bit. Well, he, he never really seems to want to make subs unless it's an absolute necessity, does he? Yeah, and uh, Ake got injured, so so that yeah. was the one sub that he made. And he's got but it's like that, that second half. It was pretty much just a steamroll from Man City of just an onslaught of attack and attack and attack. And at that point, you don't really want to add someone to that and risk it. Yeah, you can't, you've, not, you've, you've, you've not got someone to come on for Haaland who's gonna no. get you more of a chance of scoring. No. Um. The 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 other get the other just the. the the other games I watched this weekend, I watched um, Crystal Palace and Aston Villa. It was a really good game. Um, and Crystal Palace are just looking like they're going to have another great season of a really exciting... That, that is a team that a recruitment, you're just looking at everything's being a hit for them. Yeah. Yeah. Everything spot on. The centre-backs are fantastic. They've got two really good goalkeepers as well. They've got Sam Johnson, Gaeta... Yeah. Like I was sort of surprised Sam Johnson's went to the, to them because, um, yeah, because he he, he, he struggled to get. Not someone who you can 
Gaeta's not someone who you're looking at and you're thinking he's going to lose his place. Either. Yeah, absolutely. Um, oh, I, I do honour when Newcastle ever look, looking at Sam Johnson, but um, just for a longer term as opposed to Pope. But um, but yeah, um, it, it, yeah, it, it, an unbelievably solid team, and they've still got Elise to come into that. Um, uh, yeah, just, just, Eze was yeah. just fantastic. Such still such got the Gallagher team. return as well. What's that? The Gallagher return. The Gallagher return, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. Deadline day. I, I, I well, yeah, it's it's highly possible. And then the, um, I didn't see it, but Fulham getting is that the first win, uh, of the season? Um, yeah, I think they drew both both the first yeah. games, didn't they? First win of the season, Mitrovic. He looks on it. He looks really, really good. Um, yeah, he's on first fifteen goals. Yeah. Yes, and they do say if you can get a, if you can get a striker that scores, you know, um, at least double figures, you, you're looking good to stay up. Um, to be honest, so you just have a solid enough defence and, and yeah, and, and, uh, and absolutely. Um, um, yeah. Sp- speaking of a solid enough striker, everything don't really have one, um, and like to, I I, I, did, I didn't watch this game, but saw the highlights. They do seem like they're, they're struggling again. Um, I think Lampard said that something needs looking to address in the window before it closes. But um, yes, yeah, things yeah. are still not sorted out. But on a on a plus for England, Pickford had a great assist. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, get him doing doing that to Sterling in the World Cup final. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You'd be doing all right then. Um, but yeah. Um, it, it it brings us on to um our new segment um Pickford I suppose he is slightly shorter for a uh, uh, a regular goalkeeper definitely shorter arms um anyways uh, but it, it's it's everybody's new favorite segment of our podcast short king of the week um I still need to sort out a theme tune or something like this uh may, may, maybe short king by the tiny meat gang if anybody knows that one um but uh, or maybe just come up with something myself um but short king of the week i'm going as a he's just brilliant to watch i don't even think he had like a um his best game uh, I, th- I thought he can still go another level but some of his dribbles um him and zaha just seem to link up so well it seemed to be on the same page um that that's my pick, pick this week um Lads, who are you going for? We we go all on the same page here, or or, or there are other other options. After the day's performance, I can't can't not pick a Leeds player, and Adams was pretty much man of a match for me. So I'm going to put him forward, winning winning everything. Looking a much bigger player on the pitch than Kai Havertz, even though Havertz is about six foot whatever. I don't believe it's that's so funny because there's players where you look at them and you say they're 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 tall or but they're supposed to be tall but they don't look tall. I don't think Havertz looks tall and I also don't oh. think uh, Melier looks tall at all. Apparently you um, Me- Melier, uh, Melier looks really tall. He's just really thin. But 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 no. But apparently he's six foot six. Genuinely on on TV. I don't think I, he's a big just, foot. Is he not? Oh, I might, I might be, I might be over exaggerating, but I've heard he's huge. But I just, I just, I just don't see it. One of those players that I will say that when I actually did see Havertz in person, he does look tall, and you're thinking, hang on a minute, yeah. he's not that tall. But yeah, but when, no, when he's might. actually playing, he just looks, he sort of shrinks. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, for, for me, I, I think I'm, I'm happy to to go with with your uh, shout, Fergal. Um, and to be fair, Fergus. Um, very much a, a good shout. He is on the borderline of of small, though. Is he is he really a small player? I'm not sure. Um, there, there was also one mention that we mentioned sort of slightly before the uh, podcast. That I kind of waved away, but um, Miguel Almiron did score against City. He's got a lot of. He's been he's sort of written off pretty heavily by so Jack Grealish, think- no less. Um, yeah, by Jack Grealish, no less. Uh, and so I think it's probably fair to put him in the mixer anyway, especially with the money coming in. Uh, there were a lot of sort of, I suppose, memes about sort of Shelby and Almiron, you know, saying how excited they were about the new owners and obviously mm-hmm. n- not playing <laughs> um, or won't be in part of the future. 
he he was he was he, he missed a sitter, but you know scoring scoring against City ain't bad, is it? Yeah, I mean, un- unbelievable finish off this tie, inspired, um, <laughs> it, flying it, at this, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, but um, yeah, the arch of the linesman to make him think it was offside as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like poor lad, he, he's. I mean, he looks surprised just naturally, but I think he was really surprised yeah. that I, 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 that it was overturned then. Um, but yeah. Um, and the, the other mention was, was, was Che Adams. Who, yeah, I, th- I think Che Adams' time will come for, for short King of the Week. Um, you know what, though, George? I feel I feel harsh. to. I feel like we're being a bit even bitter. Huh? Yeah, so that, I was surprised by that. I just Googled it. He's really short, but I thought he's massive. He, he's elusively small. I, 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 thought, I thought it was about five ten or something, but yeah. You you want him to sign for Leeds, don't you? Well, I I definitely take him, but I don't think that Southampton are going to sell him now. Like we've we've had it before with Adams. We're going to sign him in the Championship, and then Hassan who really likes him, but mm. um. So I out of those few options, are are we all still sticking with our picks? Or is or have you been swayed by anybody? I mean, I'm. I'm not. I think we give it to Almiron for the narrative. But yeah. Al- Almiron for the for the narrative. I I can back yeah. that. I I can back Almiron. Almiron. He looks so happy as well. He looks so happy. I know, he, he, I, you know what? Yeah, I think Almiron tall, might be the only player bullet. that if we reached out and contacted him, <laughs> he, he would reply. He he, he, <laughs> he, might, he might reply uh, and get back in touch. Um. But yeah. Um. Yeah, that that's um, yeah, that's our short king of the week, Miguel Almiron. Congratulations, Miguel. Um, we'll we'll uh, we'll send that trophy in the post um, as soon as possible. Um, we we've also done fancy um player picks. Um, me and Ali had Salah. Um, George, who do you have? Jesus. Jesus, and I can't even remember who Harry has, but. Yeah, we we still got Salah to go, so we, we won't focus on on that in for now. Um, but that about wraps us up for this week. Um, thanks for us for coming on. Thanks for not gloating too yeah. much. Um, and uh, and congratulations. The, the, that's one hell of a win you got there today. Yeah, mind the gap. Um. So yeah, thanks for listening. Uh, have a good week check us out on on Twitter leave a like and a review and tell other people how great we are Um, maybe graffiti uh, just another football podcast on on your local um, uh, wall or bridge that would be greatly appreciated Um, and uh, and take care don't get caught doing it